My name's Robert Steele, and I'm the author of the Open Source Everything Manifesto, Transparency, Truth, and Trust. And I'm going to talk for a few minutes now about the open source ecology, and that's the larger context for an activist open source toolkit. Okay. Um, let me start by saying that an open source ecology, by definition, requires that we go all in on all the opens. If you do only open government or only open data, what you're actually doing is empowering the proprietary companies to take your open data and sell it back to you. Okay? If you do open government without having an activist open source toolkit, you are only going through the motions. Now, I got started in this with open source intelligence. Uh, I was a former spy. I created the Marine Corps Intelligence Command. I was the senior civilian. I spent $20 million on the best equipment that money could buy. I had access to the CIA database, the NSA database, everything. And I had one little PC in a corner. And inside of two weeks, my analysts were lining up for the PC. And this was in 1988 when the internet was something called the source. Okay? For you old guys that remember this. And I asked my analysts, why aren't you using the $60 billion a year national intelligence community for your research? And they said, there's nothing in the secret databases about Burundi, Haiti, Somalia, and all these other places that we're going to. And I did the proverbial, oh boy. Well, it turns out the secret intelligence community is, one, not about intelligence. It's about spending money. Don't worry about NSA's mass surveillance, okay? They're only processing 1% of it. Mostly NSA is about spending money, all right? They don't actually know a lot. <clears throat> the same is true of CIA. And so I discovered, and I actually did a study of this, if you take the 10 high-level threats to humanity, which the United Nations and General Scowcroft have identified and, and prioritized, poverty, infectious disease, environmental degradation, interstate conflict, civil war, genocide, other atrocities, which means kidnapping you for the sex trade and you for body parts, okay? Um, and then proliferation, uh, proliferation, uh, terrorism, only because of mass casualties and transnational crime. These are the 10 high-level threats to humanity. The intelligence community of the United States of America, which costs us over $100 billion a year today, focuses only on interstate conflict and terrorism. And it does a very bad job in those two areas. And it focuses only on a handful of countries, such as China, Russia, North Korea, Cuba, Libya, and Iran. Okay? Coming back to open source. You have open source software, which requires open source hardware. And many countries around the world, including China and Norway, have made a decision to go to open source software and open source hardware because citizens should not have to buy Microsoft in order to read government information. Okay? So open source hardware, open source software, open source open data, open government. Now you start getting into other things like open cloud, open spectrum. Open BTS, Open Base Transceiver Station, that's basically free cell phones. Uh, Burning Man provides free cell phone service for 10,000 people who text in their number and are immediately part of a Burning Man uh, cell phone uh, ecology. In Mexico and other places, we're putting up five and uh, six thousand to ten thousand uh, dollar little devices that turn all cell phones into free devices which also have internet access. Okay, so some really amazing stuff is happening out there. Open spectrum, in my view, is very, very important because the United States right now is supporting an archaic allocation of frequencies for money that basically prevent us from using smart devices and moving ahead with what's possible. Smart cities, IBM's version of smart cities, are actually stupid cities because what they want to do is impose an, a new concept on legacy uh, capabilities that have no idea what their true cost is. A true smart city is built from the design level up and it understands the true cost of every decision, which includes whether people should live in the city or not. One of the most insane things we've done is divorced bedroom communities from workplaces. Okay? 
So creating a smart city with an open source ecology is a whole different game. Now, one of the reasons this is important is because Mish Sifri has written a book, and I've given you a handout here, and, and the review is also at Amazon. He's written a book called The Big Disconnect, Why the Internet Hasn't Transformed Politics Yet. And Micah's realization, which I've confirmed in discussions with leaders of, of Next Gen and Echo Villages and Transition Towns and others, we have a Tower of Babel. All of our activists, including important groups like MoveOn, are fragmented. They're isolated. They're selfish. They have their own little hashtags. They have their own little issues. They have their own little way of doing things. They have their own little sugar daddies. They have their own little ways of spending money. And all of these things are basically a kaleidoscope of dysfunctionality. And one of the things that Micah says is that we need to create a information sharing environment so that all of the activist groups can share information and can have discussions and can have holistic views of problems. So if you have a poverty group and an agriculture group and a gay rights group and a, um, a religious rights group and a city pothole group, you want them all to be able to see the same map of the city, to see who matters where in every neighborhood, and then to come together. Okay? It turns out that potholes and poverty and, and energy are all related. And you can actually find solutions that combine people with energy and money and so forth. All right? So what this quick 14-minute session is about is the defined need for an open source activist toolkit. I have taken the trouble, and you have the names on this piece of paper here. These are the top open source activists in the country. These are the top open source coders. Actually, some of them are in Europe, okay? I would like to find a million dollars with which to hire these specific people and have a great number of other volunteers and have them create this 18 functionality thing. This was defined by a four foot high redhead named Diane Webb at CIA in 1986 and it still doesn't exist. I was a founding member of the Advanced Information Processing and Analysis Steering Group for the entire US intelligence community and we did a survey and we found that there were over 20 all source analytic workstations across the, the intelligence community. If it's across the US government, it's probably closer to 1,000. NSA had five all by itself. Each group had its own, okay? And what we're missing here is an open source approach that allows you to have these 18 functionalities. Now, these 18 functionalities are in three different levels. The first level is data ingestion. How do you collect data? Not just digital data, but analog data including notes written on napkins, which turn out to be very important when activists get together for a beer, okay? So you want to be able to pull all this stuff together. You want to be able to translate stuff. You want to be able to then analyze stuff and find patterns and do anomaly detection and so forth. And then you want to have a group decision support effort you want to be able to share information in a visualized form so that each individual can prioritize. So we're going far beyond wiki here. We're actually looking at something that allows a group to see the totality of the information, to make wiki-like changes that are recorded and can be retrieved and so forth, to have a map, which is very important, geospatial visualization of information, the ability to list all names from different activist groups for different neighborhoods with different privacy protections. One of the things that I've learned is that anonymity, uh, privacy, and rights really matter. Uh, and that we have to build that in. Well, it turns out open source is actually the most secure way of doing anything. The Linux guys like to say, put enough eyeballs on it, no bug is invisible. Okay? The reason U.S. communications and computing are so screwed up is because NSA made a deliberate decision in 1994 to totally screw over the American public. And that NSA decision was embraced by the CEOs of, at a minimum, Dell, HP, 
IBM, Microsoft, Google, of course, which is NSA Lite. Um, and so what we have today is a situation where you're a moron if you're buying American communications and computing equipment without understanding that everything you do is totally, totally visible. They have put in more back doors there than you have any idea of. In fact, the back doors now we understand are root. They're actually in the deepest part of the machine. Um, so we need a fresh, clean start. And any activist that wants to actually operate with anonymity, secure from NSA, uh, needs to go to things like ZeroNet. I've actually published a couple of posts uh, on uh, going beyond servers. There are a number of projects, including SharkNet in Germany, ZeroNet, a couple of others, in which your data is protected on your device and we eliminate servers in the cloud. And you actually have a totally distributed database. Okay? So you're not dependent on anyone who has a toll booth and is, and is holding your stuff and can manipulate it and so forth. And of course, data at rest. We were calling for data at rest encryption in 1986 and everybody was refusing to do it, all right? Now, I really want to stress that all of the threats, all of the cyber threats, are threats that were identified to the U.S. government by Wynne Schwartow and Peter Black and myself in 1989 through 1994. And the U.S. government refused to pay attention, and NSA went so far as to disobey a presidential directive, which was, you will secure American communications and computing. And NSA chose, in collaboration with foreign intelligence services uh, all over the world, to basically create a Swiss cheese global communications and computing network. Now, NSA has been benefiting from insider trading. And it's possible that CIA has as well. There's a new study just out that shows that there is a jump in insider trading on, on companies that are vulnerable to regime change and other things that are happening overseas. And essentially, it looks like people are getting advance notice uh, through the intelligence community and between Wall Street and the intelligence community, and they're using that to gain financial leverage. United and American Airlines have taken all away. Yes, exactly. And oh, by the way, 9-11, we should never have had that clearance thing, because that also cleared out a $500 billion covert op against Russia. Okay, so there was some enormous stuff that was, that was done. So let me just say that I think that we need, in addition to an electoral reform initiative, we need an open source activist toolkit. And it's not something that I should lead, it's something that others should step forward, but I believe we need an open source, uh, I've published a budget for this, we need a whole series of working groups for each of these 18 functionalities. And then just like Linux built software, this open source working group should build a totality of the open source ecology. And it should also be responsible for open source information, for substance, so that you would actually have a citizen's intelligence network. And you would have poverty intelligence officers at the neighborhood level, the county level, the state level, the national level. You would have a global poverty intelligence council that would actually be the best authority on the planet on who knows what where. And they would then have mirrors for in infectious disease, for agriculture, for all these policies, for all these threats, for all these demographics. I personally believe that the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, they should probably be joined by Indonesia uh, and Turkey. Uh, the BRICS have already created an alternative currency, an alternative uh, development bank, and an alternative internet. Okay? They are on their way to isolating the United States and Europe. And I think we need to create something that is transparent, truthful, and trustworthy. Uh, and that pretty much concludes my introduction to this open source uh, everything uh, thing. And I will just end this particular taped segment by saying that uh, my book, The Open Source Everything Manifesto, is now free in Chinese and Spanish online. And it's on Amazon. And I would be very pleased if anyone else wanted to translate it and put it up free in other languages. And this particular document, all of these documents, are a tiny URL forward slash open power. So let's stop there. Hi, Mom. I expect you to 